a lot of uh, my colleagues wanted me to start a business based on my prototypes. But it's hard to uh, work on these things at 10 o'clock at night. So I started thinking, well, what if I could do this full time? Could I accomplish something more? I saw the ad for this fellowship that said they would give you up a year of support to start your company. And I'm thinking, ah, this looks like a good match. We had these little things made out of wood and electronics to see how cheaply you could make equipment to study the nervous system. Because usually it's about ten to $40,000, depending on the features, bells and whistles you want. We slave away in the labs and try to think of what impact what we, you know, our efforts have on society. You know, and then all of a sudden, something, this little idea you had is suddenly getting all this attention. You start thinking, well, maybe I should focus on this more. Uh, what you spend on your, what you do in your spare time, you know, maybe when do what you ultimately love should be what, you know, you try to do full time. Technology drives innovation, which drives science, which, you know, drives further technology and innovation. And we were always taught in school that thermodynamics didn't lead to the steam engine. The steam led, engine led to understanding of thermodynamics. So the pressure of getting your products out and being used by many more people than yourself will have these side effects of, uh, you know, of making us a better understand the natural world, especially in the case where we have these challenges to bring these things to market, where it could lang, you know, it could languish in a research lab for years and years. When you bring something to market, it's got to work all the time, and the pressures to do that will make you know the engineering and innovation much tighter and cleaner. Patents are very, very, very complicated. Um, if the you know, I felt you know, I was like it was my first day of college when I was sitting in this. Uh, you know, you know, and when I was sitting in that room listening to these patent attorneys talked about all the ins and outs of authorship versus ownership and, you know, all the specific changes of language that can really affect how a product comes to market and who makes it happen. So that was something I knew completely nothing about as a scientist and engineer. You know, these are things I should know, but I've never been formally trained on. When you're in a normal lab, you, you try to keep your ideas small and manageable. So where being in this entrepreneurial community where big ideas are encouraged is is refreshing actually just the the this the pressure to make things happen quickly is is uh very nice very refreshing after you know you spend uh you know a few years in grad school doing the same thing every day and wondering whether you're making progress or not what we're all trying to find here is freedom you know the freedom with the, its responsibilities, of course, of self-employment. The whole notion of getting a job is, is somehow artificial. The pride of saying, I tried to do my own thing is, 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 is immensely fulfilling. And it, it, I imagine, you know, regardless of what happens over the next year, that feeling of, you know, I can try to go out on my own. It's okay to do that and not try to convince someone else to hire me is, will keep you, stay with me for all my pursuits.